Hello, I'm Dr Emily David and I'm a clinical psychologist working here at Hampshire Child and Adolescent Mental Health Service. Welcome to your e-learning package on mental health awareness. There are four parts to the training today. Part one, childhood development. So we'll be looking to understand the key developmental stages for all children and young people. Part two is an introduction to mental health and mental illness. So we'll be looking at what mental health is and what it's not. And the aim is to increase knowledge of mental health difficulties and spot the early warning signs. Part three is bringing it all together, the child development, mental health and mental illness. So we'll be looking to increase the knowledge of basic coping and self-help skills to use with young people. And also to improve the knowledge and confidence of supporting young people. And part four focuses on mental health, emotional crisis, self-harm and suicide. So we'll be looking to understand the differences between crisis, self-harm and suicide, to increase your knowledge and confidence in how to support a young person who's experiencing crisis, engaging in self-harm or where there are concerns about suicide. The first part, child development. Child development. Children and young people grow and develop in many different ways and we're going to consider some of the key ways in which children develop. The first is physical development. So as well as the body growing bigger and stronger as children get older, organs and their functioning become more developed. It is normal and expected that each child will reach and accomplish milestones such as sitting, walking and talking and physical skills at different speeds, ages and in different sequences and to different abilities. The brain undergoes many significant changes during early childhood and then again in their teenage years which can, can impact on other areas of development. Secondly, we'll consider emotional development. Aspects of emotional development include the ability to identify and understand one, one's own feelings, to manage emotions and to express these in adaptive and appropriate ways, to regulate one's own behaviour, to identify, interpret, understand and empathise the emotional states of other people, and to establish and maintain relationships. The brain is the most complex organ and continues developing well into early adulthood. Areas such as the prefrontal cortex, which are responsible for things such as assessing risk, planning ahead and regulating emotion, are still developing in the teenage years. Number three, social and relational development. Children experience, express and perceive emotions way before they fully understand them. By learning to identify, express and manage their own emotions and through observing and attempting to understand the emotions and behaviours of others, children build social and communication skills which underpin social and relational development. These growing capabilities help young children to become competent in deciphering and negotiating increasingly complex social interactions, to develop relationships and function both independently and within groups. Early relationships are critical. Nurture, stability and consistency are key to healthy growth, development and learning. Four, cognitive development. So cognitive processes refer to how children think, explore and figure things out. It's the development and acquisition of knowledge, thinking skills such as remembering, problem solving and decision making which help children think about and understand the world around them. Brain development continues into late adolescence and early adulthood. Emotion and cognition work together, jointly informing a child's impressions of situations and influencing behaviour. Cognitive processes such as problem solving and decision making are affected by and also affect emotional and social development. Number five, identity and personality development. Identity and personality refer to traits and characteristics that are individual to each person. Their values, morals, beliefs, idiosyncrasies, which develop and evolve over the course of life. Identity and personality can be determined and influenced by many factors, including genetics, interactions and behaviours of others, and environmental, social and cultural factors, such as where somebody lives, grows up, and the opportunities and experiences that they have had. All aspects of development are individual. And there are a number of factors which can influence development that are including, but not limited to, culture and society, so laws, policies, traditions, social norms, expectations and rules, demographics, so age, race, 
sex, ethnicity, education, nationality, religion, disability, economic or financial status. Diet and nutrition, environment, including community and geographical location that you live in, genetics, home environment and living conditions, illness, injury and physical health status, individual differences such as personality, values and beliefs, life experiences and opportunities, parenting and caregiving approaches, relationships and social connections, social media, news and other public sources of information, substances and medication, prescribed, non-prescribed, legal and illicit. Maslow's hierarchy of need. This model highlights that for healthy growth and development, so physical, emotional, social, cognitive and identity, certain needs have to be met. Some needs are more of a priority than others, so they've been arranged into a pyramid of hierarchy. Listen to the following video that explains more about this model. Maslow's hierarchy of need is a frequently used model to think about the needs of individuals. All human beings have a certain number of needs in order to grow, develop and thrive. This model suggests the needs we all have can be ranked in order of priority, with some needs, such as physiological and safety needs, being basic, fundamental and central to surviving, growing and developing. Other needs, such as self-esteem and self-actualization, can only be met or strived for once the fundamental needs have been met. These are also known as growth needs and stem from a desire to grow as a person. Let's consider each of the five stages. At the bottom of the hierarchy is the first basic need, physiological needs. These are biological requirements for survival, such as air, food, drink, shelter and sleep. The next basic need refers to safety needs and considers all aspects of safety, from the elements, from harm, security, order, law, stability and the freedom from fear. The next step considers love and belongingness needs. Once the basic physiological and safety needs have been sufficiently and consistently met, the psychological needs can be strived for. These consider our roles as social beings and the need for connection and interpersonal relationships to foster and satisfy feeling loved, valued, cared for and to have a sense of belonging. This would include friendship, intimacy, trust, acceptance as well as giving and receiving love and affection. Feeling part of a group or community is also an important need at this stage. For children and young people, this would include being part of a team or club, engaging in leisure activities that are social and fun. The fourth step also contributes towards psychological needs being met and considers esteem needs. This includes self-esteem, aspects such as dignity, achievement, mastery and independence, as well as the desire for respect and reputation from others. Maslow suggests that respect and reputation are the most important for children and adolescents and precedes their own self-esteem needs. The final stage referred to as self-actualization is a self-fulfillment need and includes the desire to realise personal potential and gain a sense of accomplishment and fulfilment. As human beings are complex and multifaceted, of course, there is flexibility and variance between and within the stages, with individuals needing and wanting greater or less emphasis on some needs than others. For example, for some, the need for self-esteem is more important than the need for love. However, it is a useful model to hold in mind when considering child and adolescent development, particularly in relation to behaviour, as behaviour is often motivated by the desire to have needs met. Also, we know that mental and emotional health can suffer when some of the basic and psychological needs are not met. So, what does all of this mean? Well, growing and developing is unique to each child and adolescent, but for every individual, it's hard work. 
Thriving is not inevitable. Growth and development comes with regular challenges and frustrations. Development includes and is associated with learning. Many young people learn from trying and doing, not just listening and observing, so they need those opportunities. And this can result in behaviour that may seem concerning, out of character or unpredictable, but this is part of typical growth and development, and it's part of the transition from childhood to adolescence and from adolescence to adulthood. Young people need support from a range of people, parents and carers, teachers, friends and other adults in order to grow, develop and thrive. Common behaviour and emotional responses associated with typical development, growth and learning may include risk taking, impulsivity, so being impatient and novelty seeking, poor decision making and inflexible thinking at times, being disorganised or inconsistent in presentation, so sometimes being really engaged and steady and other times being quite chaotic and forgetful, boundary testing, questioning and challenging of self, and of others, especially those in authority. Questioning the status quo, so rules and social norms. Having high or idealistic expectations of how things should be, demanding of others and wanting immediate responses. They may struggle to see things from other people's perspectives. Feeling self-conscious and being self-critical. Making and breaking friendships. Being preoccupied and having strong value placed on peer and romantic relationships and social status. Fear of failure and of not being good enough. Differences in maturity and ability, so they may be academically intelligent but may lack common sense or emotional maturity. Having strong and quickly changing emotions, including happiness, excitement, worry, sadness and anger. And these can feel overwhelming and result in meltdowns. Adverse Childhood Experiences, or ACEs. We all experience tough and challenging times. For some people, the environments they live in, the experiences and situations that they're exposed to, and the relationships that they have can have a significant impact on how they grow, develop, and thrive. Adverse Childhood Experiences, or ACEs, refer to stressful or traumatic experiences that may occur during childhood or adolescence. These may be single events or multiple or chronic events and circumstances that breach Maslow's basic and fundamental psychological needs of young people, so the physiological, safety, love, belonging and esteem needs. ACEs include, but are not limited to, abuse, physical, emotional and sexual, neglect, households where adults have alcohol or drug use problems, household domestic violence, having a family member who's in prison, having a family member with a diagnosed mental illness, parental divorce or bereavement. There are also a number of other types of childhood adversity, including bullying, maltreatment, poverty, being homeless, or living in a community where there's deprivation or neighborhood violence. ACEs are relatively common, so, in the UK, approximately half of all adults reported experiencing at least one form of adversity during childhood, and approximately 10% have experienced four or more childhood adversities. Research demonstrates that experience of ACEs and the associated stress of these can have detrimental consequences on child development and well-being. This, in turn, can have a negative impact on health, well-being and opportunities in adulthood. Some of the risks associated with experiencing ACEs include chronic physical health problems and mental illness, engaging in or being a victim of criminal activity, poverty, substance misuse, decreased life satisfaction and premature mortality. It's really important to remember that when we consider ACEs that adversity refers to situations, contextual circumstances and events that a young person experiences. Adversity can, can result in different forms and degrees of emotional and psychological distress. Adversity is not the same as and does not necessarily result in trauma or mental illness. Therefore, whilst it's really important to be aware of childhood 
adverse experiences and that they may be associated with lifelong consequences. It does not necessarily mean that all young people who experience one or more adverse life events will develop or experience harmful, adverse or negative life chances or outcomes. We've included it here for awareness that environment and life experiences and the care that a young person receives are factors that may impact on health, well-being and development. The next sections will consider what is mental health and what is mental illness.